January, you pretend to see love clearly, yearly. That's one thing I do not want you guys to do. Today is the 2nd of December. Tomorrow is my birthday. You guys are gonna be watching this video on my birthday. Yeah. I want you to become unrecognizable when 2024 comes. One thing we are not going to do is wait until the year starts and then that's when we start, oh my God, I need to do a vision board. Oh my God, I need to get some inspiration, some motivation. Oh my God, what do I want for this year? No. Every single thing that you want to achieve in 2024, you need to start getting ready to be ready right now. So I'm filming this video on the 2nd of December, which means we have exactly 30 days, which is exactly the period of time that it takes for you to create new habits in 60 days for them to stick. All the goals that you have for 2024, we need to start getting ready for them right now. Because let me tell you something, there's no magical moment that's going to happen on the 1st of January that's going to make you all motivated and all excited for the year. Because we both know you have quite a few goals beginning of 2023. And what exactly have you done now? What exactly have you done? Some of you even forgot the goals that you had we need to prepare for 2024 right now i know december is normally the period of time that most people are relaxing people don't really want to work no one wants to do anything but when i tell you if you do everything i tell you in this video 2024 is going to be your year for real for you to start the year and say oh yeah i think this is gonna be my year i'm so sure this is gonna be my year okay girl but what have you been doing what have you been doing to make sure that it is actually going to be your year the first of january is on a monday so it's going to be a new year a new week and a new day we need to get ready right now. So we have exactly 30 days to get ready. Let's get into it. Every single person who watches me, I want us to come back here, God willing, by the end of 2024. I want us to come back here the next year, a time like this when I'm doing another video like this for 2025. I want us to go into the comment section and say, oh yeah, oh my God, I did this in 2024. I got the job. I got the baby. I got the relationship. I got the degree. I got the masters. I got this. I got the silver plaque. I got the gold plaque. But we are not going to start on the 1st of January. We're starting today. The first thing we're going to have to do is do a full, genuine, complete review of 2023. I want you to journal about what 2023 has been for you. I already did this. So everything that I'm telling you guys in this video, I have already done, by the way. The first thing we're starting with is we're going to do a full and honest review of 2023. I want you to do this in form of a journal. You can write it down or you can do a video journal where you just like record yourself talking about the year. And some of the things that happened in the year, like you probably have already forgotten. Go on your gallery to January 2023. See what happened in January 2023. See what happened in February. See what happened in March. And just do an honest and genuine review. We can't start writing goals without actually seeing oh, this is what we did and this is what did not happen. We would have preferred to happen. This is the point where we forgot about our goals. And from whatever we gather from the review that we've done, then we can start making goals and start moving ahead and seeing what we should be focusing on in 2024. For me, I did my review as a journal, as a written journal. I was writing and writing and writing. I went on my gallery like just to remind myself the things that happened in all the months and there's so many things that happened that I completely forgot about. My OG subscribers know that around March I actually had a skin condition. I had pityriasis, rosea and guys now I'm completely healed and I even forgot about it. So when I was doing my review I was like oh my god I had all these freaking spots on my skin and now I'm good and now I'm good. So this was my review. I had one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I had six full pages of my 2023 review. I've never actually done like a full review of my last year. And I feel like me doing it this year actually made me feel a lot better about the year because when I was looking at it in terms of like in ambiguity, like in from, from a large perspective, I was just like, I don't feel like I've achieved anything. I don't feel like I've done anything. But then when I went into the nitty gritty of how the days were, of how the months were, I'm like, actually, I did have quite a few nice things that happened and i'm glad i had the year that i had and i'm ready for me to like move forward because i i don't know about you guys but i am the most judgmental and i just demand so much for myself and whenever i'm looking at something and i can't see physical tangible evidence of the things i have that i have achieved i just end up feeling like i haven't really done anything but then when i did a full review 
and really went into details about exactly what the year was like and the things that I struggled with, the growth that I had. And as much as maybe I may not have physical, tangible evidence, I have mental evidence, mental and emotional evidence in terms of growth. The growth that I have had this year has been in impeccable i started this year losing my granddad then i got my skin infection and there was just too many things so many negative things that i didn't like and i just didn't feel like i was the best in terms of like you know committing in terms of showing up on my channel i didn't really post as much this year i wanted to have reached a thousand a hundred thousand subscribers and i just wasn't consistent with youtube but then when i really looked at it the growth wasn't external it was very internal and i needed to go through that growth so doing this review has just like made me even feel excited because now i'm like oh my god i started the year feeling like a victim about my life feeling like life is hard and this and this has to happen and and now where I am, I know I am in full control of what my life is supposed to be. I fully understand and believe that I am the creator of my own reality. And so I am ending the year not feeling like a victim. Look at me. I have all the energy. I'm feeling so good. Because really the growth has been internal. It's been mental. No one can make me feel a certain type of way about myself. I have grown so much and I'm ready to now act on inspired action. And I wouldn't have figured that out if I didn't do a genuine review of this year. Do it without judgment. Don't do it thinking, oh my God, I should have done this, I should have done that. Well, you did it. And now it's the end of the year. Okay, girl, it's okay. You're alive and you're well and God is keeping you here because your work is still not done. And the next thing I want you to do is I want you to really think about the things that you have learned the things that you have achieved the positive things that have happened in this year and really celebrate them soak in that energy the things that you did the grades that you got the growth that you've had i want you to simmer in that positive energy a lot of us are so harsh on ourselves we're so hard on ourselves really think about it if you are speaking to your child right now or you're speaking to your younger self would you be yelling at them telling them okay well you did this but then you didn't do this other one no i want you to celebrate the things that you have have achieved regardless of how small it is if you deal with depression and anxiety maybe the only thing that you really achieved for this year was you woke up every single morning that is a win i don't care how small it is i want you to really simmer in the positive energy in the positive things that you did this year even if all you did was survive you still survived and you've got this far because your work is not done so simmer in that positive energy really write down and appreciate yourself take time to appreciate the things the positive things that you did and learned this year once you've written down the things that you achieved the things that you learned the things that made you feel positive get into the specifics about the things that you felt you could have done better the things that you may be neglected the things that you may be struggled with get as specific as possible and please don't be out here judging yourself let's first identify why those things happened the way they did why why did you struggle with whatever it is that you were struggling with why were you procrastinating when you're writing the things that you struggle with really get into the nitty-gritty of why was i doing this was I going through something that made it hard for me to actually do what I needed to do? Was I struggling because I was comparing myself? Dig deep into why you were struggling with whatever it is that you were struggling with. That can give you a lot of perspectives. So once you set your goals for 2024, you now know, okay, I have this goal, but then I struggled with it last year because I have limiting beliefs around money. I wasn't able to go for the opportunities that I wanted to go for because I was self-sabotaging. I wasn't able to achieve this because I struggled with consistency why was i struggling with consistency because i have a fear of being seen i don't want people to see me trying and looking like i'm failing really get into the nitty-gritty of why were you struggling let me read for you guys one of the examples that i've written here um attaching my self-worth on how people treat me there's a part of me that was seeking validation from certain people and whenever they didn't act in the way that i would prefer for them to act i realized that i was waiting on other people to prove to me that i am worthy of being treated well and that is something that i had to identify so that i can actually work on it and whenever it happens in 2024 i can actually be like okay this happened last year and it happened because of this now i know better let's not do that we've done a full review of the year the things that you achieved the things that made you feel good about the year and then we've also talked about the things that you neglected and struggled with now we have a really good understanding of what 2023 was like and what you as an individual are like before you start setting goals you really need to be self-aware you need to know exactly who you are as a person the things that you like the things that are so specific to you because when you're writing the things that you achieved and the things that you neglected that's actually going to give you a really good insight of the things that are actually important to you because if you're celebrating 
rating, the fact that you've got good grades, then that means that grades are quite important to you and they do make you feel happy. Then that means moving forward, you do want to get good grades. So that's probably something you should continue doing. If this year you decorated your home and it made you feel so good, so special, that you have, you have somewhere positive to come to, then now you know your home and your space really makes you feel good about yourself. So in 2024, you can say to maintain the space that you've created for yourself because that makes you feel good. All of these things that we're doing, we're actually really getting inwards to understand the goals that are very specific to us. Because one thing you're not going to do, I don't want you guys to be setting generic goals just because everyone is doing it or just because it's been told that's what we're supposed to do. I want you to set goals that are very specific to you. And doing a review of the year, talking about the things that you achieved, the things that you celebrated, and the things that you neglected that made you feel bad and were important to you. That is really getting deep into who you are and it's going to tell you more about yourself. So once you start setting those goals, you know exactly these are my goals. That completes looking back and now we're moving forward. So now we jump into setting the goals for 2024. Do not wait to set your goals beginning of the year. Okay, yes, maybe the energy might feel new and exciting and like, oh yeah, this is going to be the year that I actually do what I need to do. But you, for you to start working on your goals, there's habits that you need to build so that once the year starts, it gets you ready. The people that wait until the year to start and then that's when they, they start to set the goals, most of the people that do that have probably spent the whole of December just living life. And there's nothing wrong with living life, but when you live life and forget to work, forget to work on the things that you need to do, your body is going to switch off and be like, oh yeah, it's holiday, I'm just gonna live life. And now it's been 30 days, the whole of December and all you've done is just live life and then January comes and your body is still on holiday mode and now you're thinking that oh just because it's beginning of the year something is gonna happen and I'm just gonna be excited to work on these goals you will set those goals work on them for two weeks and completely forget about them and I have spent 2023 working on myself working on my mental health working on my emotional health really understanding who I am working on my self-awareness I have already done all the inner work that I needed to do I've done my shadow work I've done my healing I have identified my limiting beliefs and now moving forward I know what to do for me to get ahead so in 2024 I'm all about inspired action doing the things that I know I want to do because I know they will make me happy in future I want you to write down three major goals that you will not forget when people start setting goals they're like oh I want to lose weight I want to become successful what does that mean what does losing weight mean what does being successful mean? Success could be could mean different things for different people. When you say you want to lose weight, do you want to lose 10 kgs, 1 kgs? Do you want to just maintain? Probably talking about body recomposition and you're mistaking that for losing weight. You need to be very specific about your goals. No more, I want to be drinking um, uh, 2 liters of water every day. I want to go on walks every single day. No, girl. Too, too many things for you to remember. There's a lot of things that are happening in your life, okay? And it's going to be hard for you to remember so many goals if you have so many things that you've written down. So identify three major things in your life that you want to shift. Whether that's your finances, your physical health, your mental health. Identify just three major goals that you know you will remember. I'm currently in my final year in uni. This is a very important year for me academically. I know that I want to graduate um, summer 2024, so that's one of my goals. And I have written down what I want to achieve, what I want to graduate with. And then another goal for me is my career, my YouTube channel, and what I want from this. Another goal for me is the amount of money that I want to make by a certain period of time per month. For me, those are my three goals. And those goals are so specific to me that I literally cannot forget them. It's impossible for me to forget them. When you're writing down the goals, I want you to write SMART goals. SMART is essentially an abbreviation for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Because you're writing a big statement like, I want to be successful or I want to have good health, that really doesn't say exactly what that means. You need to be able to measure your progress and know if you're actually getting ahead. The goal needs to be attainable, needs to be realistic. I mean, it doesn't have to be realistic. 
I, I do encourage for you guys to dream. If you want to, dream as big as you want, but let it be a goal that doesn't scare you to the point of inaction. There's a very thin line between being realistic and unrealistic. When you're being too realistic, it could be a goal that is a, a bit too comfortable for you, something that you can achieve without having to do too much. Being too unrealistic can also really scare you to the point of inaction, like you end up not doing anything because you're just like, damn, who's gonna do that? I don't even have a car, but then I want my first car to be a Bentley girl. <laughs> Like, how are we gonna do that? A goal like that would scare me. How long do you want to take for you to achieve this goal? Because just because we're setting goals for 2024 doesn't mean that it's gonna take the whole year for you to achieve them. Those goals are specific to you. So make sure whatever you're writing down, whatever you decide you want is something that you really, 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 truly feel in your core is exactly what you want. Because that's going to keep you motivated even on the bad days. It's going to remind you, no, this is really important to me. Not, not important to everyone else, not important to my parents, important to me. Once you've set your SMART goals, you're going individually into the SMART goals and we're going to break it down in terms of the actions that you need to take every single month, every single week, every single day. So one of your goals is to make 20,000 pounds or dollars um, every single month by August 2024. Okay, that's a, that's, a, that's a very smart goal. Depending on where you are, that could be a very realistic goal for you. So if that is a goal that you have, now we need to break it down. How many sources of income will you need for you to be able to achieve that goal? How much money are you making right now? Where are you right now? And how possible is it for you to actually make a jump like that? Currently making 5,000 pounds a month. What can you do to make sure that you get to 20,000 a month? Does that look like you sending emails to pitch you need to get clients, signing up to a different platform, for, for you to get clients? Does that look like you investing a bit of money to get better at your skill? Whatever that looks like, break down the goals into actionable steps so that every single month, every single week, you know exactly what you're working towards and you actually keep making steps until you get there. This is why you having too many goals is going to be close to impossible for you to actually actualize them because there's too many things you're trying to do at the same time. These three goals that you have, it doesn't really mean that you're gonna take the whole year for you to achieve them, but if you go a step at a time, then and it actually makes it easier for you to do something about the goals and have a progress tracker for every single month and every single week to see if you did exactly what you said you were going to do. Now we're going to get into the routines. And this is why, this is why it's crucial to do this process before January. This is why we're doing this process in December because it takes 30 days to create habits and 60 days for the habits to stick. You're still the same person from 2023 to 2024. How, how is that going to happen when everyone else is doing nothing and sleeping around and clubbing and what? There's nothing wrong with that. Everything in moderation. If you don't, if you don't work, muili husahau kazi. That's Swahili to mean like your body forgets how to work. We're getting ready to be ready for 2024. 2024? We are going to be unrecognizable. Huh? We're gonna be unrecognizable. Every single goal that you have set, 2024 is the year that you achieve it. Okay, so now we have a clear view of everything that we want in 2024. We've set down, we've set the goals, broken it down into actionable steps for every month, every single week. Now let's get into the routine. So now we're creating a routine that we're going to start following in December. You're not going to start this routine in, this, in January, babe. No, you're going to start it today. Today, not tomorrow, not next Monday. When you finish watching this video, you're gonna sit down and do everything that I have told you to do and start it today. Oh, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I'm gonna do it on Monday so that I can just start fresh. No, no. We're going cold turkey. We're a completely different person now. It is what it is. Deal with it. Who gonna check you? Who, who cares? You know why you're doing what you're doing. You know why your goals are important to you. So if we have to go cold turkey on ourselves and just stick it through for the 30 days in December, so that by the time January is coming, you've already created the habit and now all you need to do is stick it another 30 days and the habit will have stuck. And now moving forward the rest of the year, you're not going to be struggling with, you know, you're starting and stopping, you're starting and stopping and then you say, okay, I'm going to wait until... Um, May and then I'll just set other goals and I'll come back up. No, we are creating our routine based on those three goals. Depending on the kind of routine that you already have right now, you work nine to five, maybe you are self-employed, maybe you're a mother, you already know what your typical day looks like and where you maybe will be able to squeeze in a bit more time for you to do something that you really want to do this year. You creating a routine is really about trial and error. You might decide this is what I want to do, but once you start putting it into practice, you start seeing certain gaps. So this is why we're starting this in December. 
we do all the polishing of the routine and by the time the year is starting we know exactly what we need to do you have your own goals that are very particular to you and let that be enough don't try to be like anyone else because you're not and you're always going to fail if you're looking at other people and trying to be like them you're always going to fail because they're always going to be a whole step ahead of you because they are being themselves they're being authentic to who they are so you are being selfish when you don't actualize on your dreams because there's probably someone who's depending on your action there's probably someone who's depending on you showing up things that i have learned in terms of like self-development or even spiritual awakening is because i read someone's book it's because someone followed their inspired action and they wrote a book someone followed their inspired action and they created a tiktok video someone followed their inspired action and created a podcast that was positive and just made me see things in a completely different perspective if you're starting something allow yourself to be a beginner you're not going to be perfect when you start following your dreams and especially if you're doing it publicly and people are seeing you not getting it right or failing or putting in all this work and then nothing is happening i want you to be okay with that going for your dreams is going to be uncomfortable if you follow your dreams things are going to be hard because it's going to be uncomfortable you're gonna have to show up you're gonna have to be consistent you're gonna have to be disciplined you're gonna probably have to leave your friend group and argue with your family members because they don't want you to do whatever it is that you're doing every single thing in life comes with good and bad you staying in your comfort zone maybe there's some good in that because you get instant gratification and you get to scroll through tiktok and instagram and forget about your problems the cost of that is you are missing out on life you're missing out on your goals you're missing out on the person that you could be really decide is it actually worth it for you to stay where you are is it worth it for you to let fear get in the way you're gonna have to get comfortable with allowing people to see you fail because failure is important in your journey if i didn't go through what i went through i wouldn't be here telling you guys this i wouldn't have done all the work that i've done on myself internally for me to actually be in a position to help other people in their self-development journey i wouldn't even have done any self-development work i wouldn't have anything to work through everything that you have been through is molding you into exactly who you need to be into the best version of yourself so stop focusing on how bad things are oh my god if only i was just born into this situation if only my parents had done that well they didn't they didn't and here you are right now you need to be okay with that and focus on going where you want to go let 2024 be the year that you put all the knowledge you have gathered all the books you have read all the videos you have watched 2024 is when you actualize all those things but we're starting that actualization today we're going to be unrecognizable i wish you guys all the best 2024 is going to be an amazing year all the best and i love you so much thank you for showing up thank you for being the person that you are please subscribe i have already reached 100 000 subscribers in my head i'm just waiting for you guys to catch up in my head i already have it i already have my silver plug i'm just waiting for you guys to catch up so please subscribe i love you guys so much and i can't wait to see you guys in my next video Bye!